How's it going everybody? Moonsong here. Yeah! So, today I'm going to be showing you the deck profile that I promised you guys for my for my regional event that I went to. As I told you, I, pl I played Paleozoics. As you can see here, I've got the deck list right here. Um, sorry I haven't been posting videos. I've been on holiday with my family and we haven't really we don't really have internet But now my parents finally got Wi-Fi so they're finally in the 21st century. Yay! I'm so happy. My mom is helping me record this video. Thank you so much mom. I love you <laughs> um, But yeah, let me let's get straight to the deck profile I'll start off with the main deck and then I'll go to the the extra deck and then I'll show you the side deck and a couple of texts I have so starting off with the main deck, we have three swap frogs. This is the standard, um, the standard frog build. Three swap frogs, three three dupes, and two Ronin toads. That, as you know, that's a standard build for Palios. Um, then we're going to one hand trap. I only played one, which was Maxi. If one plays Maxi, I didn't play the other hand traps because this deck is basically traps itself, and hand traps tend to be a bit bricky in this deck, surprisingly. Um, I played one Gamma Seal. Because I am very, very stingy. Um, more like, more overprotective. I am scared of those first turn plays where I get Chaos Maxed, or I know Blue Eyes aren't really relevant right now, but Chaos Max, Crystal Wing, um, things like that that can't be destroyed or can't be targeted or stuff, that really scares me. So I think having a Gamma Seal first turn is okay, even if you lose the, the die roll, because, you know, it's all about the die roll these days. And also, you can still discard it off Swap Frog's effect, which is still pretty good. Um, I ran two Part of Desires, Ultra Rares, sorry guys, I'm not one of the rich fancy people, but two Part of Desires to get my, my pluses, because it's not an Egg Nine, guys, yes. Um, one Raigeki, I only play the one, uh, I don't, I didn't play Dark Hole on the side like most people do, I just played the one board wipe, I don't like to have the Dark Hole because, yeah, I don't want to board wipe myself. Um, then onto the traps, I play three Paleozoic Canadia, this is the flip face down, flipping face down these days is really good, even though it's link format, what people don't realize is you still can't link summon with face down monsters, so... This card helped really well, and especially for stuff that couldn't be destroyed, because you just flip it face down and destroy it afterwards. It, this came in really handy in a lot of situations. Then I played three early nineties. Um, this guy really helped me against Pendulum, Pendulum Magicians, and also surprisingly against um, Invoked. Although I didn't win that match, because Dupe Frog is a terrible card to draw. But this card is really, really good. It's beautiful. Um, then I played two Dynamiscus. It's the discard is a bit too much, so that's the reason why I played do, two. Sometimes I sided it out to one because it wasn't strong enough at times. Um, the banishing is nice, but yeah, it's not that strong. I, I usually like against Invoked. I'll try banish Invocation and something like that. Like I banish all the main problem cards, you know, that have grave effects and stuff and floats. Um, then I played two Marilla. I want to cut this down to one because the amount of times I bricked with this card is a real problem. I should have tested it out more. But I played two Marilla. Um, it's really good because you can get more traps to the grave. Um, you can get more Paleozoic so you can get more special summons. And you can also send Last Wind to the grave which you can actually bring back. So I played two of those. I played one Leon Cholia. I was thinking of actually taking it out. I cited it out a couple of times but it did help late game. It's not really good for early game, but late game it's really, really good. Um, then onto the normal traps, I played one Imperial Order and two Anti-Spell. These were so godly against the Pendulum Magicians. I never lost to a single Pendulum Magician player, which was amazing. I love it. It was amazing. Oh, that, that match, that one match against the one Pendulum player, I drew the Anti-Spell Fragrance two times, like in both games, so it was just perfect. Um, and then for draw power, I played three Reckless Greed, because it's just broken. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, you don't you skip your two draw phases, but if you have two of these, at least it's really nice and it's worth it. Um, two strikes, one warning, just standard monster negation and summon negation and stuff like that. The light points don't really matter. Um, I think I played three Dimensional Barrier. I'm not quite sure. I don't know where my other secret rare is, but I think I did play three. I think I lent one from someone else. Um, yeah, I played three-dimensional barrier because it's still really good in this format. 
And then I did side it out against like spirals and stuff. And then I played two Lost Wind because Lost Wind is still good. Um, I didn't play three because three can be a bit too much and not all the special summon. I was worried about the true Dracos the most, but I didn't see that, thank goodness. I know they're not relevant now really, but you know, there is an odd chance that you'll see them. But, yeah. I played one Storming Mirror Force, um, just because it's really good, it bounces back to hand and. Uh, you don't actually have to worry about the grave effects and destruction effects and effects from grave or whatever So I played one of those it came in really clutch against a lot of decks <laughs> Especially against the pendulum magician player who can do anything um, Then I played one torrential tributes always good Especially if your opponent makes a huge board and you haven't got a toad out. It's really good um, one compulsory evacuation. This compo this um, goes really, really well with the kaiju because you can kaiju something, bounce it back to your hand, special summon a palio, and kaiju again, which is really, really nice. It's just a really good card to have. And then because my friend, um, because my friend had it or he bought it, and then he told me to hold on for it, and he never e hold on to it, and he never actually ended up playing in the tournament. I got to play one evenly matched, and I never actually <laughs> used it the entire tournament. I kept banishing this guy, so with desires or something. So I never actually played it. Um, on to the extra deck. I played two Miss Starboy because Miss Starboy. I mean, you get extra summons. I went I went into a lot of OTKs with this. Um, then I played three Totally Awesome because it's the boss monster of the deck and you always play Totally Awesome. Um, I play one Paleozoic, Anno... Oh jeez, I don't even know how to pronounce his name still. Anomalocaris... I don't know, please someone help me. <laughs> um, I played one of him, he was really really good even against Fenian and the Magician because even if you summon him and they found a way to destroy him, you still actually get to pop something because it's either player's turn. He's like a tornado dragon, basically. Um, then I played two upper beanias because the surge power was really good. I played one cat shark just to, in case I couldn't get over something really big, so it really, really helped me. One Digusta Phoenix, this really helped with OTKs, although I did find other ways to OTK with Toad and the Starboy, but I did go into him a couple of times. This guy is actually a really good addition to the Paleozoic team. Um, the way he negates the monster effect and, and monster's effect and reduces its attack to zero can really be a good surprise to finish your opponent when they have something that they think they can survive with. I went into him and won many games with him, which was really, really funny. But anyway, yeah, I played him. I played one Sky Cavalry. Um, I only went into him once against Invoked, but yeah, I didn't really go into him that much. But he was really good for outing things that my deck couldn't. I played one number 45. He was good against um, things like uh, Pendulum Magicians because I could stop some of their stuff. And he was good against Dinos because I could stop their field spell at least. Um, so I went into him once and that was actually against Dinos which saved me. Um, I played one Downward Magician which was really good. It was good if I needed a beat stick or needed to pierce something so yeah. And then I was going to play this guy but I didn't. I played FO0 instead. Uh, but I never really went into either of them, so the last spot didn't really matter. And then for the side deck, I played two cherries. I was really scared of the mirror match because I played a couple of mirror matches online and they weren't really good. For the cherries targets, I played Firewall Dragon and ABC. Um, I didn't have double helix, so I couldn't really counter the spirals, but I had other stuff for spirals at least. So I played um, Firewall Dragon. Firewall Dragon also came in, came in good against Dinos because I ended up having all tokens and I couldn't target them so I just Link Summon for Firewall Dragon which was really cool. Um, then for the hand traps, I played two Draw and Lock for the Spirals, um, two Ghost Ogre and then Ash Blossom. That was for the, if I lost the, di if I lost the game and they were going to go first, it was really good. Um, then I played, I've only got one Ash Blossom unfortunately and two Ghost Ogres so... Yeah, I can't afford the rest of the Ash Blossoms. Um, I played one, ga one Gamma Seal on the side there because I already main one and it's good to have two always. So I played one Gamma Seal on the side so I could side it in just in case. This guy would have come in really clutch against my Spiral matchup if I had drawn him. I wish I had more to play 
Which, what is nice about him is that you can take control of Sleeper, and as we know, Sleeper is the only real problem of that deck. So Sleeper, you could have wiped their board with. So he was really good. And he doesn't target, so you can just take control of Sleeper that easily, and it's a hand trap. You discard him. Um, then I played two Cosmic Cyclones. I played them against the Invoked player to banish their um, invocation. And I played them against Penny the Magicians, and also against Dinos to stop the field spell, but that was about it. And then... Two system down for the ABC players and anything else that could possibly machine that's rogue that could have entered. Um, I actually never played against any ABC players, which was kind of sad because I was really, really prepared for them. But yeah, it's all right. So thank you guys. That's my deck profile. I hope you really enjoyed it. Um, there are a couple of things I would change now about it. Maybe take out those Paleozoic things that I showed you. And I probably would have t played two Spell Shattering Arrow and... What? Spell Shattering Arrow? Yeah, that's it in the side deck. Because that would have been mu a much better pick. I personally think that would have been a lot better. So tell me what you think about this deck profile. Tell me what you played in the last regionals. And tell me what your Paleozoic tech profiles are like. I would like to hear some interesting texts you have. Thank you for watching this video. Please like and subscribe and hit the notifications button. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.